Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. Peter Kennedy, Kennedy's Garage. Now, what am I at today? This is an engine that's just thrown on the ground. It's out of a Ford Transit van. But what I'm doing is I want to try and change an injector pump in one of these, not on this engine, but in one of these. Now, I know that there is a special, special tools for taking off that gear off the pump and then a special tool for holding or locking that gear into place without having to remove the actual timing chain now what i'm doing on the engine out here is i'm coming out to do a little cross reference to have a look and see can i pull this off without special tools have the pump come in a little while and the first one of these i've ever done and i just don't i didn't organize tools and again like one or two i've done before i don't feel like waiting for a special tool just purely because i don't feel like it's all maybe big crackers, but if I wasn't crackers, she may, may not be watching me, okay? Right, what am I doing? What I'm after doing is I have that actual cover that sits on here on top of the pump pulley in the actual timing cover. And what I'm after doing, I'm after pulling off this, and I can see treaded in two treaded holes here. And what I've done is I've sat a vernier in to get the width of the holes, okay? Then what I've done is on this cover that I've removed, I've actually drilled two holes in relatively equal spots on each side of it. And then I've drilled a hole in the actual middle of the cover. So that's exactly what I've done. Now what I'm hoping for, and when I look, I have a two bolts that were thrown on the ground here. And these bolts are quite relatively long and they'll thread in through this. And what I'm hoping to do, side actual bending, what I'm hoping to do is remove, remove the cover on the other engine. Lock that in place, I'm hoping. Now I have the nut in the center removed from this already. But I'm hoping that when I get myself lined up. I'm hoping that I will be able to tread in these bolts in through this. I'm then hoping that when this goes in, two bolts go in and hit off the block, that by tightening these, they're gonna pull the actual pulley off the actual pump. And when they pull it or crack it from the pump, that the actual bolt holes in the plastic are going to stop my timing chain from moving anywhere. So in theory, it's, I'm trying to mimic. Sorry, compressor, leaving off water or air. Um, I'm hoping that this thing is going to mimic the tool for holding the uh, gear in place off the pump. Now, when I have hopefully cracked it by tightening these in the transit, the good one, um, it's 2016 2.2 .2 transit. I'm hoping then once that's in place and I get my pump renewed that I'll be able to put my, this bolt is anti-clockwise anti threaded, so it's a left-hand thread. So I'm hoping that that will go back in and I can reinstate the bolt in place. And once I reinstate my bolt in place, that will squeeze the um, shaft of the pump back up and back on. Now, I'm not going to be specific on timer marks or any of that stuff. I'm just presuming and are assuming once I have these held in place and I don't rotate my engine down here that it cannot go anywhere. Get it? My gear can't move in the way because of the holes and the bolts in that and I'm hoping that I'll be able to send my pump back out and send in a pump back in. Now I'm going to tell you what happened to this pump that I have. In there you can see a rusty kind of a cap. There's three pistons like that actually for building up diesel and it's leaking from in around here. Now I've taken diesel, actually it's leaking. I've taken the cover off of that, I've taken another one off the bottom, I've renewed seals, I've tried cleaning it and I've tried to stop this thing leaking diesel and I cannot make it stop leaking diesel. So I actually probably had a good pump here if I didn't take that one apart, but I just thought again that I would have made this work, but I didn't. So that pump is useless with a new pump coming. We're gonna chance and or try this. Maybe it is slightly mental slightly crackers but slightly mental and slightly crackers is what we're going to be doing today okay so this is trying to change injector pump on a transit without the special locking tools okay and without removing the timing cover 
that's what we're going at today. We got our stuff going and we'll see where we are. Okay, our big transit is pulled in to the workshop. And what am I going to try and make this as fast and easy as possible? We have a water pipe going across here over onto this. I'm going to take off that. Plastic cowling off the radiator I'm going to take off. Um, I'm going to get off this little... The alternator belt is off already because I have pulled the water pump back out of place. I think it's two or maybe three bolts holding on the water pump there. It comes off in one big lump, so it's a big unit or module that will just pull out of the way. So I haven't leaked or lost any coolant. Basically, it's just out of my way to create a bit of room so I can pinpoint where the leak was to change that actual piston plunger pump whatever we're going to call it on the side of the actual injector pump itself so once these couple of bits and pieces are off it i'll then be able to get i'll take off that actual fan as well because i took it off the other engine for myself three bolts holding that actual viscous fan on you could get in and there is a 32 uh, nut down there but i find it very hard to get them things loose so i just put out the three bolts one two and i think there's one down that side this is one two three and i'm sitting around there and probably some silly little bolts holding that bit of a yoke on once of that then i have about when i say six eight inches of room there and i'm hoping that that's going to be enough i'll show you where i was leaking okay good or bad or indifferent now i could not get that item there to stop leaking and there is only four bolts sitting on it and i tried changing it i took the other one on the bottom off the other engine as well but i couldn't stop it leaking and change them clean them and all that crack Water pump look is just hanging a bit out to one side, sitting out of my way, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to get up here relatively easy. I do see a bracket on the back of the pump sitting up there, but I'm hoping that we get in somewhat easy. A lot of lads are saying to take off the injector pump. I'm going to try and do it without taking off the injector. Sorry, intake manifold. A lot of lads do say to take off the intake manifold. I'm going to try and do it without. Now, if I get stuck, when I get stuck, and I have to do it, that's okay, but right now I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to take off the intake manifold far now. I'm hoping that maybe I, I can't see a whole lot from down at the back. No, I can see nothing actually from the back. Maybe I'll see more if I take off that intercooler and stuff pipe out of my way. Now, I know it's kind of kamikaze, but anyway, that's it. We're going to try and get this thing off today. Hopefully my tools will work on the front and hopefully this thing will pop out and in handy enough. Okay, guys. One, two, three bolts, cooling fan out. Clip down the bottom, clip down the bottom, rad cowling up, and then I pulled off that pulley as well and we'll move that to the next step. Okay guys, I have the bits and pieces taken off up here, and I've taken off my fuel line, fuel feed coming from the pipe, sorry, fuel feed pipe coming from the injector pump up, 17 nut here, little eight bolt there, little eight bolt here in the rock cover, and then a 17 nut back at the back. So I'm only just leaving it hang back out of the way. In at the back then I have two fuel lines going onto it, and they're just little push-in divots on the side and the two fuel lines will pop up. So it's hard to actually show you. I actually have the other, the new pump in hand. So basically that is what we're looking at for the fuel pipe. That is fuel delivery or turn and the same here. And, and that's actually going to be the fuel delivery. And I'd say that's suggest that that one there is going to be a return. Um, then we have a fuel temperature sensor and an inlet metering valve. So these are going to be little locking tab that's just down here to pop off pop off here and then sometimes it's nice to be able to look then in at bolts so the bolts we have one two and three so that one's probably going to be the the hardest one to get in at i'm presuming these two are going to be relatively easy um why am i saying that because it i could get in at this on the other engine so i can get in at that so this is the one i think that's leaking in our car maybe it's that one i haven't two. Um, but anyway, look, that's where our three bolts are. We're going to have to try and get up underneath and try and see can we get these bolts up and out. Okay, guys, from underneath, I've taken off the intercooler pipe, which is sitting up here. It's kind of tight there, so I'm not going to try and show you. Intercooler pipe went on the bottom of the intercooler, and it was handy enough, two jug clips, and it came off the throttle body there. Now, what I kind of done was I measured roughly then what the length is going to be from here to there. And what I'm using is a semi-long 10 socket and a maybe three inch extension i'll give you exact measurements in a minute and then i'm using the kind of swivel head uh, ratchet here and i have this bolt what i'm casting as the awkward one just about out um, the next one then is going to be up on the inside of that so it might be a slight little bit awkward as well but it shouldn't be hopefully too bad i also popped off my temperature sensors and the inner meter metering valve block connectors i'm going to get out the awkward bolts before i contemplate 
taking out this one and then contemplating my homemade timing tool up here, okay? Have the the grip on the pulley cracked and broken. It was a little bit different than the other engine that I showed, so I had to make up another little bit of a steel plate with two bolts and a bolt control. I'll show you that as well in a moment, but for now anyway, we're gonna get out that and concentrate on that bolt and the one internally, but we're getting there, slowly but surely. There's a little bracket actually on the end, which was a size 10 here. That was easy enough to get at, and then there was two bolts going in here, but I could see them when I came over from in here, I could see them up on this direction, okay? Sorry about the lighting. Um, but let's, yeah, if we're gonna get out that bolt and continue on. Hey guys, second. this is a different transit that I'm changing Oop, an engine in, but there is the style of a, I'm dropping my bits, sorry. That's the style of a pump pulley that's in my newer one. Now I don't do many transits, but just luckily I had a timing chain. This thing is seized solid and I was trying to figure out what was out there happening. You don't need to know the story, I suppose, of that. Anyway, what I had done with the holes that I had drilled in my plastic cover, I got Allen key bolts and these Allen key bolts sat in through the pulley nicely. I put in a little wedge in there to stop the bolt coming out on both of them. And then I had a little bit of a steel plate, which wasn't very fancy, but I had this little bit of a steel plate and this bit of a steel plate basically up through the bolts. You get what I'm saying. Went through the two bolt holes and then I just squeezed that bolt in. You can see the head of it nicely mushroomed and polished off. I ran out that a little bit. It's actually anti-clockers I said there, but I ran that out a bit and once it was loose, I pressed against that, putting against these via this and that cracked the grip on my um, pump pulley. Just, oh I, and the lining up part of it, once I cracked that then I put, once the thing was loose, I put my cover back on and I used just an extension that went in and again was very, very snug inside in these holes. Uh, a little bit longer than that now in all fairness, but the, lined up my holes with the pulley, sent in these two yokes, took off the nut and then just took the pump out of the back. Okay. I've got out the other two bolts out of the pump, quite easy. I actually got my battery ratchet in at them, so there were plenty of room for that. Now, what I've done, as I said there, the pump in here was slightly different. I'd actually, again, I'll show you what it, one of them, another one of them looks like in a minute, but the, what have I done? <clears throat> I've put my, I've used two extensions on this occasion because that's what fitted the holes in the pump rather than a treaded bar. So I've, I've just two extension stuck in there. This is really now homemade. This is only because I just don't have a time tool and I'm going to do it. So don't do this. I'm just showing you a day in the life of. What I've done is I've stuck in a longer bolt here, longer bolt there, tie clip, well that's on the on a pulley, uh, tie clip around them, big tie clip around the two ratchets and I've put a tie clip in the middle again just to put a little bit of force that way on my extensions. They're actually rock solid there now. And drilled through the hole. So right now, the bolts are levering off the cover, levering into the pulley and are pulled snugly that way in order to hold my timing chain and injector pump pulley in place, okay? Nut or bolt is off it. I actually had it off once I cracked. I'll just show you what I used. What I used here was just that piece of steel to, I suppose, pull off the actual brackets. Sorry, pull off the pulley off the actual pump, okay? So I had two bolts in here with Allen key heads on. I don't see them here at hand. I don't know, I must have walked away with them or something. But anyway, went in, snagged on the two holes, and then I just got this bolt and squeezed it in. It basically worked like a pullers. And these tools to do this are very, very cheap. Again, just lack of planning on my part. I actually don't have them. So I think about 150 euros or so would buy you the actual lock and tools for this, the specific ones, just that I'm not going doing it. It's getting late in the evening, I want to have this done before you know, peace and tranquility of nothing and no one around calling me and I'm just going to get the pump out now. So in theory, the pump is only sitting there, it should just get a wiggle and a woggle and it should fall out in the ground and then I should be able to fit or reinstate my new one back in situ. I'll pop out the pump and you'll see in the next picture if I have it uh, resolved without having to take off time and cover. I don't think I will. I'm fairly confident in what I've done here, even though it looks kind of farmer-like, but anyway, it's going to work. Okay, guys, from the other underside, I've put in a screwdriver to give a little bit of a lever, and I think we're getting close to getting out there. This might not be a single-handed job. It feels very much like my pulleys and 
stuff are all kind of held. Oh, and she's coming a little bit tight, but she's coming. Starting to heat off the trot body. Oh, okay, right. That was that. She has just popped out of place now. Am I going to get clearance up here my, with my throttle body or will I get caught or snagged? Hopefully not. We'll have to do a little bit of twisting here on it with second hand and see where we end up. Okay, that was relatively pain free. All I had to do was get up my second hand and just twist the inlet metering valve away from the throttle body and she popped out handy enough and easy enough. Okay, time for this one to go back in. I just got a bit of oil up front of that, put it on the seal just to make sure it's going to slip in somewhere handy. Time to offer this thing back up again with two hands. And yeah, that worked out relatively easy. Okay, pump is up and in situ. Said I'd show you the little extension. So a relatively long 10 socket and an extension. But it's just kind of about the length of the pump body. You know, it's not a whole lot longer, which is giving me clearance to get in at the bolts that we need to get in at. So that's it, bolt back in. Okay, top bolt, that's exactly what's happening here. Let me ratchet, that little bit of movement. Now I can get my other hand up to hold the socket on the actual top bolt. That's the awkward one, the rest of them are as e easy as I said, but that's it, swivel head ratchet and that in there and I'm twisting. I'm only getting a couple of clicks of the ratchet at a time, but um, if I'm holding the socket, I can do it, okay? Little bracket back in place, 10 bolt, two, I think they're E. 40 maybe torques. My little safety tight clips are taken off and I'm running back in my bolt back into the middle of the pump. As soon as I get a little nip on that now I'll take out my okay have a little nip on it there now. Take my extensions. Exactly what I used I think I, I don't know that I show this but I actually drilled the holes in that little bit of a cover a little bit long if I truth be told. Oop. Okay, just leave that there. So what I used anyway was just two extensions, but I, I did drill the hole. They fit the pump perfectly, really snug. But the holes that I drilled was just a couple of millimeter big, so I ran on a little bit of tape. <clears throat> and I was just putting it on nice and snug. Again, you can see it. To keep them nice and tight, okay? Yeah, I think I'm getting relatively kind of happy here. We're on the home run. Take out this cover again. Okay, there's my cover. Yay, she's done her job. On this occasion, tighten that bolt and just make sure everything is as it should do and start reassembling all the handy stuff. Auxiliary belt routing, lads, to um, put it on, okay? On her belt back on and plastic cowling and cooling fan back in, the three bolts stuck into place. Next two items are this little piece that covers the top of it and the water hose that runs from here and up and into the expansion tank okay back on back on now I didn't do any bleeding on this thing but I have everything connected and I'm hoping that maybe my injectors and my rail was flooded with fuel and that the pipe should in theory get itself bled fairly fast what I did notice when I took the what do you call them, rubber grommets off the pump, that the pump was flooded with fuel. So hopefully, with these things not being disconnected for too long, hopefully it'll start and run relatively easy without doing too much bleeding. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to turn the key live and see where we're going. Okay, maybe this is a bit presumptuous that it'll start handy, but sure. We'll chance it and see where we go. What happened there? Okay. May need to... Go and bleed it. I don't think I had any other injector pipes or anything off it. Okay. Come on, baby. Save me the hair to move. No. Okay. Scan till on her. We'll see what we can. Uh, I'm not sure even crank it. Okay. No, that doesn't work. We're going out and we're going to have to go bleeding. Okay, fuel, where are we going? Uh-huh, crank it there, please. Okay, I'll do it. Okay, we have diesel coming, let's squeeze this. Okay, go again, please, thanks. Yeah.
do a couple of uh, resets and fog clearing and stuff like that and just see where we end up, okay? Make sure the thing is not leaking on there. Okay, we have no leaks anyway. Thank goodness, and right from that part there, right between it, it was leaking. I know you can't hear me, but that's where it was leaking from. Okay, guys, we have a fuel or diesel light on, but we are okay. Car is up and running, everything doing what it should do. Have had it out in the road, cruising, flying, not a bother. Old pump thrown in there. Here's our, our plungers and stuff, what I was trying to change with a couple of seals and etc on them. So I changed these, these, sorry, from another actual pump, but lo and behold, it didn't do the job. So anyway, all is fair in love and war. It didn't work. We have to uh, throw them away. But the car's driving the finest. I even replaced all these little washery o-ringy things in it only with second hand, but again, it didn't work. So anyway, hey ho, for this one, lads. Yeah, please like and subscribe. Hope you got something from it. Might be a bit chancy, but this is what I do, sometimes. I don't have all the tools in the world. I don't have a bottomless pit of money where I just buy, 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 buy. The independence and or the aftermarket, you're on so many stuff, like, you know, if I just glance across the yard there, I'd have Nissan Primeras, Mercedes, BMW, Citroëns, blah, 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 Fords, Nissan Qashqai's. So the long and short of it is, it's hard to have all the special tools for everything. So sometimes I improvise. And that's pure out of necessity, rather than tight, maybe more than necessity. Um, not wanting to spend money on tools that'll be thrown there that I'll forget about in three or six months' time. Anyway, for this one's lads, hope you got something I'll talk to you on the next cartoon. And by the way, everyone say hello to Merville. Say hello, Merville. Poor old Merville the dog. He got brought off for a spin. I actually went off with my van. I left it somewhere there today to pick up another car and I forgot about the dog. So the test drive for this was going off to get the dog out of the back of the van. Anyway, that's see you on the next cartoon. Talk to you soon.